Hello and welcome back to Martin's Movie Corner. Today, we're going to be discussing a movie I saw recently in theaters, as well as the Academy Award nominations, which were just announced about 12 hours ago as of recording this. We're going to start things off with the movie I saw this week. I saw the movie Plane, starring Gerard Butler. This low-level thriller was quite an enjoyable watch. Now, it wasn't anything overtly fancy. The script felt like a recycled, die-hard rip-off movie from about 25, 30 years ago, and I actually quite enjoyed many of the action set pieces in this film. The movie's about a captain of a commercial airliner who, in the middle of a storm on New Year's Eve, has a bit of a uh, mechanical error and causes the plane to lose all power and crash land on a foreign island. Now, this setup isn't all that original, but the execution was, was good enough. It moved at a pretty quick pace, although I think it spent a little too much time uh, with the setup and introducing all these passengers. Now, thankfully, the flight only had about 17 passengers. You're not overwhelmed with the amount of characters in this movie. You kind of get a gist for everyone by their stereotypes as they're sitting down. And the real standout of this movie was Michael Coulter, who plays a convict who is recently caught and being transported back to the U.S. to face charges for a murder he committed like 20 years ago. And this character really is where the movie shined. It has that kind of pulpy con air feel, which is always a lot of fun when watching an action movie of these characters getting redemption arcs, even if they may or may not be bad people. And I actually was rooting for just about everyone to get out of this scenario. There wasn't a ton of unlikable characters, except maybe the stereotypical villains, who uh, I guess are in a plot once the plane crash lands to kidnap as many of these passengers as possible and hold them for ransom. Gerard Butler is definitely one of those actors who has an interesting career when he took off uh, and became a household name after the movie 300. It seemed like his trajectory was to be this, ne this next gigantic action star. And he's definitely still that action star. Even though this movie feels like a kind of average Joe guy, uh, he, when he's running around with a, a machine gun and trying to protect his passengers, I really bought into it. He seemed like a tough guy. This movie definitely feels like a rainy Sunday afternoon watch on TV with your dad film. It was kind of odd seeing it in a theater for me personally, but I did genuinely enjoy it. I don't think it dragged too much, and once the action started going, it really delivered on some interesting set pieces. My favorite action set piece in this film involves a rescue team that is sent to uh, you know, rescue all these passengers after they're finally able to get a hold of help, and uh, one of the rescue team members has a uh, 50 caliber sniper. And this is a perfect setup for some really cool wire work and squibs. And we actually got that. There's this really great scene where the sniper is, is far away and puncturing uh, uh, through vehicles and walls to, to get these um, terrorists who are trying to kidnap and, and ransom these passengers. So although it's just a bunch of... Uh, cheap kills and not a ton of character motivation. I mean, the guy who's the sniper, I don't even know if that character has a name, but it was a really cool set piece. And honestly, the practical effects uh, in that action sequence were like worth the price of admission alone. Now, of course, there are some faults with a movie like this. I, I do think that the uh, story, although simplistic, um, really could have delved a little bit deeper into the characters. You're kind of supposed to be rooting for Gerard Butler's uh, captain because He's got a daughter who he's trying to see, who he doesn't get to see very often, and they're trying to celebrate New Year's together. And while that's a sweet sentiment, it just uh, it feels a little like awkward and not particularly uh, well engulfed in the story. It's like a setup and then a little bit of a payoff at the end. But at the end of the day, I don't think people are going to a movie like this for like a family drama. I think that this is a perfect subpar action movie. If there's nothing else in theaters that piques your interest, why not check this out? Another fun standout performance in this was from Tony Goldwyn, who's a great character actor, has been in many films, and he plays this kind of fixer for the uh, flight agency, and his whole objective is to uh, get these passengers rescued, but all of his scenes are in like this boardroom where he's meeting uh, with the, the people in charge of the airliner, and he's the one who hires the mercenary rescue team, and he's kind of just like 
you know, saying a bunch of lines for the trailer, but he really chews the scenery, and honestly, every time they cut back to that sequence, I was looking forward to seeing more of Goldwyn's performance. He, he knocked it out of the park in this relatively campy and cheesy role. T just talking about this movie is making me smile. I think if you go in with low expectations, you just want to be entertained for a little over an hour and a half, you'll be entertained. Uh, for sure. This is this is a good watch. I, I recommend. Uh, this is a three-star movie for me over on Letterboxd, and it seems like we're getting a lot of three-star movies so far this year. There hasn't been a single film I've seen in theaters that I've been outwardly disappointed by. Uh, Skinnamarink and Megan were both nice little horror movies, and Plane Here is a really solid January action movie. Hopping over to our Oscar discussion, here are the movies that are being nominated in certain categories. I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly, pick out the one that I think probably stands the best chance of winning. In the Best Original Score category, there are All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Inishirin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and The Fablemans. I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, Babylon might be a lock in this category. I think it's the most dynamic score, but you can never be too certain. I also thought that the Fableman score was quite good, and it might be one of the last ones from John Williams. Now, we've been saying this for every movie that John Williams makes, but truly, I, I do think that um, this is like the end of an era for, for Spielberg, and he finally told a, a really personal story, and the fact that John Williams was able to put the score together for him I think that the Academy might give John Williams just one more Oscar here. Babylon seems to be flying under the radar in a lot of other categories though, so if they do want to recognize this movie, I think it's probably my personal favorite score of the year. In Best Makeup and Hairstyling, there were five movies nominated there as well, which was All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther, Elvis, and The Whale. It's interesting. It seems like the hair and makeup uh, category usually goes to like a movie with like a bodysuit or some sort of like uh, character altering performance. And actually there's three of them this year on the list. The Batman has uh, Colin Farrell in an unrecognizable, um, you know, fat suit to play the penguin. You have um, uh, Tom Hanks doing a similar thing, of actually a very similar thing, with his portrayal of the Colonel and Elvis. And then you have a very realistic version of that done extremely well in The Whale. I can't think of a time where we had three body morphing uh, out like uh, makeup jobs in one year. And I, I'm wondering if these might cancel each other out. If I had to pick a favorite, it's probably still for The Whale. I think it's really convincing. There's been a lot of pushback, especially over on Twitter, about the movie The Whale, but I think one thing it definitely gets right is you never once look at that suit, you never once look at that fat suit and think that this is uh, a movie or this isn't real. I think it, it's really believable. And, uh, I mean, great work for the Penguin and for Elvis as well. I thought Elvis was the weakest of the suits. I think the, the hairstyling, though, was, was pretty great for a lot of the ensemble in that period piece. So Elvis does have both elements going for it, but if I'm sticking with the lock, it's still going to be the whale in makeup and hairstyling. Costume design, we've got Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. If I were to take a shot in the dark here, I think that best costume design is actually going to go to Ruth Carter for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. She actually, I believe, won an Academy Award for the last Black Panther in, in um, costume design. And I, th I think that she does a very good job of, of working with the... Um, the different materials of now two different kind of uh, fantasy cultures. And um, I think that this is a really, really solid pick. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see Everything Everywhere all at once nominated in this category, although it does have a lot of costumes and it does have a lot of different looks for these characters. It just, it wasn't a category that I thought it would get nominated in. And that really just goes to show that Everything Everywhere all at once is the front runner this year with 11 nominations, a best picture, four acting noms. Everything Everywhere All at Once is really looking like it's got a good shot at winning best picture this year. I do not think it's going to win in this category. Um, I think it's either between Black Panther or Elvis. And I, I think the safe thing to do here is to go with the Black Panther pick. I think, I think Black Panther Wakanda Forever is probably gonna take it this year. In the animated feature film category, we have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. Now, usually in this category, I feel like Disney and or Pixar are almost certain lock. They win almost every single time. And Turning Red came out about this time last year on streaming, I believe. 
So I really don't know if that is going to hold any water. I haven't heard a big push or a campaign for Turning Red. I think it's a great film, but I think it's probably gonna be Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, but it could go to Puss in Boots The Last Wish. I mean, it's been in theaters for a month now and it's still doing quite well at the box office. Has a lot of legs, like a lot of good animated movies do. I think it's definitely between Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and Puss in Boots The Last Wish, but I think the critical favorite is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Stop motion animated movies typically do pretty well in this category. And I think that uh, Guillermo del Toro is just one of those directors who people like to root for. I think it's gonna be Pinocchio. In the visual effects category, there was All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of the Water, The Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. It's pretty safe to say this is going to Avatar The Way of the Water. I think Top Gun Maverick might be a close second, but anything else I feel would be a little out of, out of character and out of pocket. I, I do like to see uh, other genre movies like The Batman and Black Panther nominated here, but I mean, I really think it's gonna be going to, to Avatar for its, its groundbreaking visual effects and uh, all the different mediums that this film was projected in. Even if I had a problem with the frame rate change in the middle of the movie, I feel like that's, that's James Cameron once again flexing the muscle that he's going to try to continue to push the industry forward, whether or not the science is there and ready for it. So uh, yeah, I think the, the motion capture and underwater recording technology really is, is a, a candidacy for visual effects and almost the entire movie is animated. So I, I think that that's the safe pick here. In the best production design category, we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of the Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablemans. Now I think if there's any narrative or hope for Elvis or The Fablemans to win best picture, I feel like they're gonna have to win a technical category. So if I were to just make a shot in the dark guess, I would say that this is probably gonna go to The Fablemans for production design. However, in that narrative, I, I think this would be another good category to nominate Babylon for. I thought the production design of that movie, all of the intricate sets and locations and uh, getting that look of like old Hollywood was done extremely well, also in the costume and, and hair department, but uh, specifically in production design, I think Babylon would be my favorite pick here for production design, but I think it's really between Elvis and the Fablemans here. In the best original song category, we've got applause from Tell It Like a Woman. Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, the Lady Gaga song. Lift Me Up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever, the Rihanna song. Not To Not To from RRR. And This Is A Life from Everything Everywhere All At Once by Mitski and David Byrne. I think if I had to make a guess and a prediction here, I think this is actually gonna go to Not To Not To. I think that RRR was a bit of a success and I'm surprised that India didn't nominate it as its uh, country representative movie this year because I think we'd see it again in the foreign language category. Um, however, our, uh, in the context of the movie, Nyatu Natu is one of the coolest dance sequences I've seen. It's a really good original song and I hope it wins this category, I genuinely do. Um, but if I have to go with a safe pick, this might be a good place to give Top Gun Maverick some love. Lady Gaga's already over with the Academy Awards. In the, in the world where you gotta keep giving Oscars to the movie that's gonna win Best Picture eventually, I could see This Is A Life uh, uh, taking it as well. I, I think the, the people in the industry that, that appreciate uh, original song categories probably like Mitski, David Byrne, and, uh, and Ryan Lott quite a bit, so it could go that way as well. And with the sheer amount of nominations racked up for All Quiet on the Western Front, I think that the best international feature film category is looking uh, a little one-sided, but we have Argentina 1985 there, Close, EO, and The Quiet Girl as well. If I had to pick one, I think it would be EO, but I think All Quiet on the Western Front pretty much got this category on lockdown. Best film editing was an interesting category this year. The films nominated were The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, and Top Gun Maverick. I think it's probably gonna go to a flashier movie like Elvis, um, but my pick would definitely be Tar. I thought Tar was a very clean, pristinely edited film. But um, with the Bohemian Rhapsody win a few years back, it really seems like the Academy likes that flashier editing style. And I can't think of a more stylistically flashy edited movie than Elvis. I mean, that movie was all over the place. And I think that people who don't know a lot about editing would think that that means it's good editing. And therefore, I think that it stands a great chance. Um, I think Tar is my, is my pick 
but um, Top Gun Maverick could also win that category if again that push is there and it's like how many how many awards can we give Top Gun Maverick for its technical achievements? Uh, that would be a good one to put it. Um, but yeah, I, I, th I think it's probably going to Elvis. For best cinematography, we've got Tar, Empire of Light, Elvis, Bardo, and All Quiet on the Western Front. Now, if I, again, had to make a pick here, it's, it's going to be for Tar. I think Tar was the best shot movie I saw last year. I could see Elvis taking this category as well. That flashier style seems to, to get people to win. I love that Roger Deakins is getting yet another nomination for uh, Empire of Light, which has no other nominations, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, again, him, him and his pairing with Sam Mendes is a great director, director of photography, cinematographer matchup, and I can see why it's getting recognized. For best original screenplay, we've got The Banshees of Inishirin, Everything Everywhere, All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Now, this is a category I tend to care about quite a bit, but oftentimes the movie that wins this category is more likely to win the best picture. Now, not always. There's been a lot of examples where that hasn't been the case. In order to get the best picture, you kind of need either director or writer for that film, uh, sometimes even both. So I think that mm, the movie most likely to win here is Everything Everywhere All at Once. Again, if I had to make a selection, I think it would probably go to Tar. I also think that the like, Fablemans was a really interesting uh, candidate in this category as well. Uh, throwing a bone to Triangle of Sadness would be cool. I thought that that script had some faults, but it is a very good screenplay. But if I had to make a, a guess here, I would lock in everything everywhere all at once. Uh, Banshees of Inishirin, though, Martin McDonough's an incredible screenwriter and an incredible playwriter as well, so this category is really, really tough, and I think depending on how it's judged, I, I think it could go many different ways, but I do think that Everything Everywhere All at Once will be taking Best Picture. I think it's officially now the front runner. It was really between like that, the Fablemans and Banshees, really, and I, I think just the sheer bulk of nominations it's gotten, I think it's going to win a lot of categories like this. Best Adapted Screenplay might be the most chaotic category of the year. I this, this is wild to me. You've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. Uh, the reason why I say this is so wild is Glass Onion has no other nominations. I don't really know if the script for Top Gun Maverick was that great. I, I think it borrows a lot of elements from the first movie, which, I mean, it is an adapted screenplay. It is a sequel, so it, it is acknowledging that. But, I mean... There's a few sequences in that film that I, I think are fantastic and probably really well written, specifically with the scene with Tom Cruise and uh, Val Kilmer. I, the bulk of that dialogue and, and that, that movie itself is a very simple premise. The main action set piece of the movie is just blatantly ripping off Star Wars and kind of self-aware about it. And also Glass Onion, I, I just feel like it's throwing Ryan Johnson a bone. Um, I don't know if that script was, was as good as people are saying. I think it's pretty safe to say that either All Quiet on the Western Front or Women Talking is taking it here. I think both are based off of really well-received books, um, and I think my lock is going to be for All Quiet on the Western Front, mostly because it has so many other nominations, whereas Woman Talking is nominated in very few, but I, I think it's between one of those. Best Supporting Actress was a very exciting category. I'm very, very happy with the five nominations here. Angela Bassett got a nomination for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Hong Chao from The Whale, who I didn't think was going to get recognized, but I'm really, really glad that she did. I think that especially introducing that movie and being a central character at the, the first hour of that film, she's crucial to that situation. I also didn't think Carrie Condon from Banshees of Inishirin is was going to get a, recognized in this category either. And I think she's the glue that holds that whole movie together. I, I think Carrie Condon might be the best performance in that movie, so I'm, I'm happy to see the nomination there. And then what everyone's talking about, Everything Everywhere All at Once, getting two Supporting Actress nominations, Jamie Lee Curtis's first ever Academy Award nomination, as well as Stephanie So, who plays the daughter in the movie, uh, having a breakout performance in that, and honestly, asked uh, that role was requiring quite a lot. So I'm happy to see both of those in there, but again, Having two uh, nominations for the same movie in the same category, they tend to cancel each other out. I don't think it's going to Jamie Lee Curtis or Stephanie Sue, unfortunately, but I think both are, are warrant, warranting of that category. If I had to pick one, it would be for Carrie Condon and ba Banshees of Inishirin, 
but something tells me that Angela Bassett has this category on lock. And I think that there's a lot of hype around that performance. And honestly, for the first Marvel movie to ever get an acting nomination, this one makes sense. I thought she was the heart of that entire film and gave a great, great performance in it. I think this one, honestly, I think people are gonna be happy no matter what. I think all five of these nominations are really great roles, really well-written characters, and even better acted. So this category really, really excited me. The Best Supporting Actor category also had a lot of great positive buzz around it as well. Uh, Brendan Gleeson for Banshees of Inishirin. Brian Tyree Henry actually finessed a uh, Best Supporting Actor nomination here too for the movie Causeway, which not a lot of people saw, which I believe is on Apple TV Plus right now. I think Brian Tyree Henry has proven himself time and time again to be an incredibly versatile actor, so I'm, I'm happy to see him get a, a nomination here. Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans. Again, a really, really small role. He has literally one scene and uh, is getting recognized for that. I think that that's really cool as well. Uh, Barry Keoghan from Banshees of Inishirin, again, another acting nomination in that category, which just goes to show that I think Martin McDonough for Best Director, it might happen this year. And uh, Ki Hoi Kwan from Everything Everywhere All at Once, a great comeback performance, and this is probably the lock for the category. It's my personal pick as well. Ki Hoi Kwan hasn't done a movie in like 20-something years, and uh, he's a famous child actor who's coming back into a very big, well-received role. I think that, that he is a lock. He won the Golden Globe for this performance, and uh, I, th I think it's pretty certain it's going to him. But again, the supporting actor and actress categories are my two biggest uh, thumbs up from the entire uh, nomination list this year. I, I love both of these categories, and I, I could see any of these 10 actors being recognized um, in both categories there. They're all great written roles, great performances. We got Kate Blanchett for Tar, Anya de Armas for Blonde, Andrea Riceborough for To Leslie, uh, Michelle Williams for The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. This category is stacked. I think that my pick would be Kate Blanchett for Tar. I thought that, that was the best performance I saw in any movie this year. Um, but again, that vehicle for Michelle Yeoh and Everything Everywhere All at Once that is a very well-written character and a lot going on, and I think that it was incredibly acted and couldn't have been acted by anyone besides her. So I could see it going to Michelle Yeoh as well. Michelle Williams for The, the Fablemans, she's one of those actresses that just seems to be due, and I could see it going in her favor as well. Um, I don't think really Anya de Armas uh, uh, stands a chance in this category, unfortunately. Blonde was a very poorly received movie, but I think it's awesome that the Academy like threw her a bone because I don't think she's the problem with that film at all. I think that Anya de Armas gave a great performance and I'm, I'm honestly really happy to see the recognition there. And uh, Andrea Riceborough, I still haven't seen to Leslie. Uh, no one was talking about this movie until about two weeks ago. Andrea had a crazy social media push with a lot of actors and friends. It seemed like a grassroots thing where everyone was just shouting out how great of a performance this was. And uh, I guess I missed the boat on it, so I'm going to have to catch up with Two Leslie soon. If you want a review, leave a comment below. I I'd love to see that movie, but I I there's so much buzz for this out of nowhere. It I mean, it could happen. I'm not saying it can't. Um, but my lock would be Kate Blanchett, and I think it's actually probably going to go to Michelle Yeoh. But honestly, another great category here. Best Lead Actor is Austin Butler for playing Elvis, Colin Farrell in The Banshees of Inishirin. Brendan Fraser in The Whale, Paul Mescal in After Sun, and Bill Nighy in Living. I, I don't know if Bill Nighy's gonna get it. Um, in fact, I would say he's probably the least likely to get it, but um, Austin Butler is looking like the favorite now, which is absolutely crazy. I mean, I think he's the glue that holds Elvis together, similar to how Anya de Armas is the glue that holds blonde together, even though it didn't work quite as well as it did in Elvis. But if I had to make a prediction here, I, I, the, a lot of the buzz was centered around Brennan Fraser and this comeback performance, this really, really crazy character study, and he knocks it out of the park. He's wearing a, a suit, a fat suit, that weighs 300 pounds in some scenes, and honestly, had a performance that brought me to tears multiple times. Kind of similar to Andrea Riceborough, uh, Paul Mezcal's performance, I, it, After Sun got no other nominations, so I'm really, really happy to see 
uh, Paul Mescal nominated here. I think he's one of the best young actors working in Hollywood, and he is what made that movie soar. After Sun was a great, great, great movie, but his performance in it was one of the best of the decade so far. And, I mean, you can't sleep on Colin Farrell. I think Colin Farrell is probably going to win this category. He's one of those actors who has been around for a while. He's He was in, like, four movies this year alone. So he seems to really have the industry on his side. I think that the people that vote for the Academy uh, are probably going to recognize uh, Colin Farrell here. But I, I think there's also just as big of a push for, for Brendan Fraser, or at least there was a few weeks ago. I, I think it's probably going to be Colin Farrell for the Banshees of Inisherin, But my pick would be Brendan Fraser for The Whale or Paul Mescal for After Sun. Both of those performances were... Uh, just one tier above all these other great ones. The Best Director category is a very interesting one this year as well. I feel like oftentimes in order to win that Best Picture, you either need Best Original Screenplay slash Adapted Screenplay and or Best Director. And I don't necessarily think that this year's Best Director is going to go to the Best Picture, which is definitely not always the case. So we got Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Inishirin. You've got the Daniels, or Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinart from Everything Everywhere All at Once. You've got Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and Ru Ruben Ostlund for Triangle of Sadness. I think all five of these directors are very, very great choices, but something tells me, I, th I think the Academy's gonna recognize Spielberg one more time. Spielberg has won Best Director in quite a while, but he's continued to put out a movie almost every other year since. And I feel like The Fablemans is his like diary movie. It's his personal story. And I think that the Academy's really gonna really support him on that. Um, I think if we're going like on a typical year, I think it would go to the Daniels. Just all these acting nominations, all of these uh, other category nominations, I don't know how that doesn't equate to Best Director. If you're giving them 11 awards for their movie, you might as well give them the Best Director. So I, th I think everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, I think the Daniels could be taking Best Director as well, but I think that they're a second tier option. I think it's going to Steven Spielberg, but if I had to pick one here, I think it would be Todd Field for Tar. Not too many people are talking about how this is a comeback movie for him as well. He hasn't made a movie in 16 years and he knocks it out of the park. First script, first time directing in a long time and just hits a home run. So I think my pick would be Todd Field. I think the Academy's gonna go with Spielberg or they're gonna go with the Daniels, but there's that wild card factor. There's Martin McDonough here. And I mean, Banshees of Inishirin is a very, very solid, solid movie across the board. Again, a lot of acting nominations, a lot of nominations in other categories. And finally, Best Picture. You've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of the Water, The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. I think with just the sheer amount of buzz that has been going on all year, this movie came out in like late March or early April last year in 2022, and now we're we're going to be in March of 2023 when the uh, when the Academy Awards are actually happening. I think that I think that everything everywhere all at once is probably taking best picture this year. Um, on the contrary, the other ones that I could see take it, I could see Banshees just again for that that same factor of a lot of acting nominations, director and a screenplay. It seems like everything is in Banshee's corner in a traditional year, but everything everywhere all at once is running away with it. 11 nominations is nothing to bat an eye at. Um, but if I had to make a pick, it would probably be for Tar. Um, I think that Tar was a really, really well-crafted movie, and you can tell by how many awards I think it deserves in these categories. It was also my favorite movie of last year. Um, but I, I think that... No matter what, I think all 10 of these movies are, are pretty good picks. I, I like to see that um, some of these blockbusters, some of these really high grossing movies like um, Avatar The Way of the Water and Top Gun Maverick and even Elvis to a certain extent get recognition here. Um, I will be probably a little upset if Elvis takes Best Picture. I did not think that that movie was very good. Uh, it's wild how many uh, awards and nominations it's racked up already. Again, it's just one of those movies where Austin Butler's fantastic in it, but the rest of the film, 
I don't really know. I have very mixed feelings on that movie and I don't think it's all perfectly well executed. So Triangle of Sadness was a bit of a surprise in this category. I'm happy to see it recognized, but it would have been really cool to see After Sun in here as well. Um, but yeah, I think that the lock here is, is everything everywhere all at once. My pick would be Tar. And uh, yeah, I think that Banshees, Fablemans, they're all contenders. This is a tight race. All in all, the 2023 Academy Awards have a lot of things to look forward to. So what do you think is winning Best Picture this year? Leave a comment down below. I'm excited. Uh, the Academy Awards season is here. Uh, as you noticed, I skipped a lot of categories. I hadn't seen most of the movies in, including uh, animated shorts, uh, documentary shorts, documentary features. I, my plan is to catch up and make sure I've watched everything on the Oscar ballot this year. So my opinion on some of these might change, but I'm really looking forward to checking out the Oscars this year. It should be an exciting, exciting race, and I hope that the, the actual presentation of the show itself is good. This has been Martin's Movie Corner. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Duel of the Takes YouTube channel and join our community of discussing movies and pop culture. And one thing that we're all about here is comments. Send your opinions my way and I'd love to react to them. Drop them down in the comment section below. I want to know your thoughts on the 2023 Academy Awards. And if you've seen it, let me know what you thought about playing. Is it a three out of five stars? I certainly thought so. Stay safe and have a good night. Peace.